Welcome back to the program, everyone. Let's switch gears now and turn our attention to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It's a somber mood in Moscow's Russian opposition leader, Alexei Navalny, is being laid to rest at a funeral service in the capital. Crowds gathered outside of the church of the icon of the Mother of God amid heavy police presence, chanting, We won't forget you. The funeral service, presided over by a priest, and accompanied by choral singing, allowed people to fill past the open caskets of the deceased to say their farewell. Navani has been buried at the Borisovsko Yerk Cemetery on the banks of the Moskva River in Moscow. Navani's father and mother were spotted outside and were greeted by mourners and well wishers who came to bid their farewell. However, his wife and children, who currently live abroad, were not spotted as their fears of possible arrest and repression from the Kremlin. The 47-year-old Kremlin critic died last month in a Russian prison Arctic Circle where he had been serving a lengthy sentence on politically motivated charges. Well, let's bring in the VOA's Russian service, uh, Alexei Gorbachev, who joins us live on the program for, from Washington, D.C. Alexei, it's, it's a rather emotional, emotional day in, in Moscow. Uh, kindly uh, bring us up to speed with the mood and, and atmosphere from uh, that country, from what you can see and hear. Thanks for having me. For those Russian citizens who were ho hoping for democratic reforms in Russia, today is indeed the dark day because Navalny symbolized anti-war resistance. He was uh, symbolized. Uh, he was the symbol of resistance for anti-war Russians as, as well. And when he returned to Russia three years ago, uh, ago after he was poisoned, many people, uh, they believe that uh, they will envision him as a leader of Russia in uh, one day. He inspired his supporters because they believe that uh, changes were only possible, are only possible when within Russia and not uh, from outside. And Navalny, he was a firm uh, believer in the Russian society that he will be able to build the new democratic Russia. And based on what I've seen on social media today, I've seen some interviews of people who came to attend his uh, funeral. People are saddened, people are devastated because the person they saw as a Russia's future leader, he was tortured in prison no one could do anything regarding that. And unfortunately, people, they were barely able to pay their respect for him since uh, the memorial vigil, it was cut short following the former, formal uh, procedure in formal ceremony in church. And then officials uh, closed the casket and removed uh, his body from the church for burial. And uh, right now he was buried uh, to the ground uh, in the Barista cemetery in Moscow. Alexei, and judging from previous gatherings of, of Navani, we understand there is heavy security presence as, as expected. Uh, is that just a routine check or are there reports of the use of force on such uh, gatherings uh, as we speak um, or whatsoever from, by the Kremlin? Uh, thousands of people attended his funeral and police, they like it's not feasible for them to arrest everyone. So the reason for such heavy security presence that you mentioned is they want to intimidate people and they want to uh, restrain people from marching towards the Kremlin. Uh, you mentioned in the beginning that the crowd was chanting, chanting slogans. They were also chanting anti-war slogans and uh, slogan, Russia will be free and say no to the war. They were echoing uh, Navalny's political stance. Uh, from past experience, what Russian government can do to retaliate those who, uh, those brave people who attended his funeral today, they may use facial recognition system to identify those who came. For example, if you came to Navalny's funeral um, uh, and if you work for the government, uh, they can terminate your contract. Also, they can t uh, expel students uh, from universities, from colleges, from colleges if uh, they have been tracked uh, by facial recognition system uh, attending this funeral. But also, I saw already by this minute, I saw 
dozens of reports about arrests across Russian cities where people tried to lay flowers or gather to honor uh, Navalny's memory. And I saw that uh, dozens of people were arrested. Hmm. Well, uh, Alexei Navalny will be missed by his supporters all around the world, but he'll be missed more perhaps by his wife, Yulia, and her children, who we understand could not attend the funeral of a husband and father. There are concerns of a possible arrest. I wonder perhaps is the Kremlin bothered and Putin perhaps bothered about how this paints a picture about Russia to the rest of the world? I think Yulia Navalny was very clear about Putin's uh, picture to the rest of the world when he when she addressed uh, uh, Western leaders. Uh, she indicated that Putin's regime and Putin is personally responsible for Navalny's death. Uh, she said that Nav uh, Putin killed uh, Navalny, killed her husband, and uh, what she and indicated that Navalny realized uh, many years ago that. Putin is not a political leader. He is a bloody mobster. It's what Yulia Navalny said addressing Western leaders. And she said that the only, and her husband's death indicates that the only way to fight uh, the bloody mobster, as she referred to Putin, is to establish methods uh, to fight the criminal gang. Identify those financiers of Putin who help him to hide uh, his money. Identify his ally. Identify his allies in other Western countries who still uh, help Russian regime, and to fight with Putin's regime as uh, you would fight with a criminal gang. Because diplomatic notes or set of sanctions of or resolutions. They're not gonna work. Uh, Navalny realized it many years ago when he exposed extravagant wealth of Putin's elite, and that's what Yulia Navalny urged everyone to realize. Uh, especially now, when we see thousands of people gathered to commemorate uh, a politician whom they envisioned as a future leader of democratic Russia. Absolutely, Alexei, uh, and it's perhaps a very big vacuum to fill because uh, a presidential election in Russia will be held uh, between the 15th and 17th of March this year, this month, and this will be the eighth presidential election in that country. Many observers uh, do not expect the election as always to be either free or fair. What do you, what, what do you make of this and, and perhaps the earlier part of my question, who steps into the shoes of Alexei uh, Navani, now that he's no more. Well, uh, everyone ex everyone expects that Yulia Navalny will step in his shoes because even though she wasn't a political leader, she was more like his, you know, wife and his ally. But now uh, uh, there are there aren't that uh, many people who can really follow Navalny's legacy, and she is one of them. They expect Yulia Navalny to be. Uh, politician of a new type who will continue Navalny's crusade and who will address those people in Russia uh, who are uh, willing uh, and who expect and who hope for democratic changes in Russia. She also, um, everyone expects expects her to work with uh, Russians in exile because we have millions of Russian people who fled the country after Putin launched the full-scale invasion of uh, Ukraine in 2022. And uh, yeah, election will be held in this month. Actually, uh, what Navalny urges world leaders, they just, uh, because this election, no one expects uh, transparency and I would uh, even, and analysts uh, uh, suggest to call it so-called election, because uh, it's not, you know, election as uh, uh, it, you would expect in democratic countries. And she, Navalny, uh, indicated that it's important for world leaders to uh, not accept Putin as, as a new president uh, of Russia. And she suggests, and Navalny supporters, they... Uh, 
urge Western leaders, Western democracies not to call Putin the president of Russia anymore. Uh, you can call him like the leader of Russia or the head of Russia, but not the president, because according to the Russian constitution, he should have uh, stepped out and uh, in 2008 and never became a president. And uh, Navalny's path as a politician leader was just to arch uh, Putin follow Russian constitution. And that's what uh, people expect from uh, uh, his wife who can step in his shoes after his death. Uh, Alexei, we, we, we imagine it's, it's indeed an emotional day. It's a, it's a sad day for uh, many supporters of the Kremlin critic. And of course, uh, a beacon of hope he was to thousands and thousands of them. But we must thank you most kindly for speaking with us. Your view is Russian service, Alexei Gorbachev. Thank you indeed for joining us live for us from Washington, D.C. Thanks for having me.